One of my favorite films of all time, Short Term 12, does something better than 99% of the films we see today. It introduces exposition organically and allows for the viewer to keep on guessing and learning throughout the film. If you haven't seen Short Term 12, I highly suggest you do so before watching this video. Not only is it a great piece of cinema, but I'll be diving into some of the plot details that would detract from your first viewing experience. Now with Short Term 12 and the subject material and the themes it's dealing with, it could have easily been preachy and melodramatic, but since director and writer Destin Daniel Cretton spent time inside the world, where he was in a group home with troubled teenagers, we are left with a realistic, jaw-dropping story. Brie Larson gives a breakout performance, but I want to talk about John Gallagher Jr.'s performance, in line with Rami Malek's. Gallagher's Mason is one of the clear highlights of the film. Mason strikes a perfect balance between silliness, charismatic, and comfort with the kids. And I believe that he's actually the voice of the director throughout the film. I'm going to lose it in my shorts in front of all these people. While Rami Malek's Nate is naive and clueless. And I believe he's there to symbolize the audience and give us a gateway into this world. Holy shit. Remember what I said. Perfect example of this is when we see Nate and Mason's first interaction. I got a pretty good story for you if you're ready. Okay. This simple story being told is a masterstroke. It does a couple things extremely well. It establishes our main characters and their personalities through interactions and reactions to the story. If you're listening to a story of Mason's, understand that there's very little reality in it. Hey! <laughs> but it also gives us a ton of exposition without even knowing it. It gives us clear rules for the group home that will be very important later. Once they foot outside the gate, we can't touch them. It adds backstory to the characters and their relationships and priority roles inside Short Term 12. It's my second day, so I don't know what the hell is going on, but Grace, she's standing right there and she just lets it happen. But the main thing we see is when Grace Sammy busts through that door, we get this oh, right. Where are we going, Nate? Wait, what? Come on, Nate! Go. The audience is thrown in head first. A nice, calm, simple story with a cigarette can spontaneously combust into a rundown with a swearing child at the other end. Nate isn't allowed to sit back and watch. Just like the audience, he has to participate. Hey, oh, got pretty far that time. I think it's a new record. So Then Mason anyway, continues on with his story, that, which causes Nate to look shocked. Me, this is so normal for them. This is every day. Mason acknowledges Sammy, implying that they do care. It isn't just a job. You heard that story, right, Sammy? Yeah. All right, let's get you up. Up we go, bud. All right, I'll see you back at the office. Welcome to Short Term 12, man. All right. And then we're left on our own, for us to make our own decisions. This guy's been eating his Wheaties in the morning. <laughs> Have you ever thought about the Olympics, Sammy? Running track? I believe that Cretton's direction is flawless, even in the opening montage. First we get spatial awareness of where everything is in Short Term 12, while introducing us to main characters and their personalities. But there's simple attention to props that will become very important later on, but for now they seem like nothing. The cool down room is shown but not explained. We only see one shot of that dog in the room, but later when Jaden is sharing that important moment with Grace, we see the dog, and instantly we make the connection. There's a simple shot of Marcus with his fish, which again will be very important later, and Sammy with his room full of toys, which will later be taken away from him, causing a meltdown. These simple shots that the audience remember are the very least intrusive way of introducing exposition. They draw zero attention to themselves. Every seed has a payoff, and the biggest one of all is the last scene of the movie. Cretton decides to bookend the film with stories by Mason. Not only does this story give you the feeling that the work they're doing is for something, and it gives you that warm feeling, but this is something that Nate has been searching for the entire story. Again, Nate is the audience in all this chaos. But you see Nate finally coming to terms with the job he's taken, and is finally comfortable. Who is this guy? That was Marcus. And then the craziness breaks out again. But look who's behind Grace and Mason. Thanks so much for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.